Welcome, Welcome to Own or Disown, where tech decisions are made easy. Hi, this is Stephen from Own or Disown. Now, not all of us have brand new laptops, and also many of us are, are probably guilty of not updating our graphics drivers regularly. Now, I wanted to set out and see if, you know, not updating your graphics drivers, does it seriously affect the frame rate that you get? Now, granted, drivers also seek to make games more stable, resolve any graphical issues that might arise, or various bugs. So, if I do find any of that in my testing, you know, I will mention it. But some drivers also cause bugs of their own, so some people wait until those are ironed out before they update it. Now, before we jump into that, a quick word from today's sponsor, ProtoArc, who sent me their 2-in-1 wireless hub mouse that retails for $79.99. Now, if you use the link in the description, you do get 20% off if you buy from them direct. But it is also available on Amazon. So taking a closer look at the uh, the hub mouse here, um, it's, it's quite a low profile, I noticed. What's very interesting in this, we do have a, a hub located here in the back so um you got the usb c here 60 watts power delivery a usb type a and the hdmi here and of course the usb c plugs into your computer so you can use it as a standalone hub if you wish um, but also it's 2.4 gigahertz to connect with the uh, the mouse here and then to do that you of course you turn it on and uh, you press the mode button until it's on number three and it'll connect. Now, if you want Bluetooth, it's numbers one and two that you're wanting. And you long press the, the, power, uh, the, the mode button here and it'll connect to, you, to your computer. So it's Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz. Um, it's very lightweight. As for buttons, there's only two. You've got the left click and the right click. And of course, the center wheel here, which also clicks as well, but there's no buttons on either side of the mouse. So it's not really meant for gaming. Um, it's also with it being such a small mouse, I'd say it's better for small hands, larger hands. It might uh, feel a little more tiring over long periods of time, but it is very lightweight. Uh, it's sculpted here at the back, so it does give you good grip. Um, yeah, it's nice. Welcome back. My Clevo P870TM has a desktop i9 9900K CPU and a GTX 1080 that goes up to about 195 watts. Now the driver on it was the 512.15 and was dated from March 2022. And I wanted to see if the latest uh, driver, the 537.13 from August the 22nd, 2023, were, were any better across 11 games. Now I wanted to test some games that were launched after March 2022, as those should show, in theory, the most improvement with their newer drivers. Now first up, I fired up Battlefield 2042, which was released in November 2021. However, like most of the more, most more recent games, an error would pop up saying I should use a much more recent driver. Battlefield 2042 was the only game that would not load on the old driver, so this alone makes a strong case for updating those drivers. The Last of Us Part 1 was released in March 2023, but the game worked perfectly fine with the old driver and I could, couldn't really discern any difference between it and the latest driver. And indeed, there was only a 2 FPS or 5% difference in average, and the 1% lows actually weren't that much different either. Spider-Man Remastered was released in August 2022, so again, I would expect an improvement with the newer drivers. Now in this case, the old drivers did feel a bit better. I spent a good amount of time jumping around the buildings and the old drivers were smoother, and this was reflected in the data. The new drivers were 11% slower on average, and 1% lows reflected the stuttering that I was seeing. Hogwarts Legacy was released in February 2023, and again the older drivers were smoother. I would like to point out that with both drivers, I didn't experience the micro stutters that you normally get to see on, you know, on all of the 4000 series that I've, that I've tested so far. And that's despite you know, the GTX 1080 being weaker. So the August 2023 drivers were 8% slower on average. The 1% lows were also lower. Now this was a big surprise because we all know how buggy this game can be. So I was expecting the new drivers to be much better. Unless, you know, perhaps they are more focused on technologies such as DLSS and frame generation. The next game I tested was Overwatch 2. This was released in October 2022, so it was after my older driver. However, Overwatch has been out for a while and I suspect that it runs much the same as the original. I used the replay feature during a whole match that I played. 
and performance was very similar, actually only 2% in favour of the new driver, which is where I thought it would be. Dead Space Remake was released in January 2023, and I tested it using the opening sequence. Now this was a tough game for the GTX 1080, so I had to drop down to 1080p and using medium settings. The new drivers were a bit slower, but not that you would really notice in actual gameplay. There was a 5 FPS differential or 11% in favour of the older driver. Now all the remaining games were released before the older March 2022 driver, so one would expect not much of an improvement unless perhaps the games were buggy at launch. Now on Battlefield 5 I played the Rotterdam map uh, with 64 players and gameplay was I would say equally smooth irrespective of the driver I used. And looking at the data, the average was exactly the same, and 1% lows were marginally better with the old driver. For Cyberpunk 2077, I used the inbuilt benchmark, and visually, I couldn't see much difference. The new driver was 10% faster on average, and in both cases, the 1% lows were pretty low, so I would suggest you know, switching to medium settings, that would be better. Now, I also used the inbuilt benchmark in Far Cry 6, which was released in October 2021. The difference of 6% between the new drivers was pretty small, and the same is said with the minimum frame rate. I couldn't discern any visual difference between the two. Now, Rainbow Six Siege has been around since December 2015, so one would be forgiven thinking that there would be no improvement in frame rate. However, there have been so many patches to this game over the past 8 years, it was interesting to see that the new drivers were 18% faster than the older driver. Even the minimum frame rate was consistently faster. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was also tested using the inbuilt benchmark and both drivers offered fairly similar performance, the new ones having a 6% advantage. So, for the 10 games that I was able to run and test, I showed the average improvement in frame rate for the new driver over the old driver. Now, 6 games showed an improvement. One was the same, and 3 games were slower, which resulted in a net 2% faster frame rate with the new driver. That is not much, to be honest, and I was quite surprised with this result especially on games that were released after the old driver. Now, out of the five of those games, three were actually slower, and on the most part, noticeably so. Now, my guess is that you know, the new driver must focus on new technologies like the DLSS and frame generation, but I was surprised to see a lower frame rate. So I conclude, I still think you should update your drivers periodically. Now, I don't think there's any burning need to do it every, every time a new one comes out, but if you are experiencing some dirt, uh, issues in your game, perhaps the new driver will help you out. I'd like to thank you for watching and if you did find my video useful, consider subscribing. Bye now.